Welcome to an example on how to use the method of undetermined coefficients to solve a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Which means we're talking about solving a differential equation that fits this form here. Notice how it's not equal to zero, it's equal to a function of x, which is why it's a non-homogeneous differential equation. In the previous video, we discovered how the general solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation will be in this form here. So to use the method of undetermined coefficients, step one is going to be to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation in this form here. The solutions to the homogeneous differential equation will give us these two terms of the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. This is sometimes called the complementary function. And then for step two, we're going to guess the form of the particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation based upon g of x. And this function is going to have undetermined coefficients. And then for our final step, or step three, we'll perform substitutions based upon the function that we're guessing will be a particular solution, and then we'll solve for the undetermined coefficients to find the general solution. So step two and three will allow us to find this particular solution here. So let's go ahead and give it a try. The first thing we should recognize is that the given differential equation is a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. And because g of x is equal to an exponential, the method of non-determined coefficients is an appropriate strategy. So for step one, we're going to solve the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, which would be y double prime minus three y prime minus ten y equals zero. Notice how this homogeneous differential equation has constant coefficients, which would be a, b, and c, and therefore we can solve this using a characteristic equation, which would be a r squared, or one r squared, plus b r, or minus three r, plus c, or minus ten, equals zero. We can solve this by factoring. So we have r and r, the factors of negative ten that add to negative three would be negative five and positive two. So our solutions are r equals positive five or r equals negative two. So these would help us find the general solution to the homogeneous differential equation, which would be given by this form here. But because we're after the solutions to the non-homogeneous differential equation, this solution does give us the first two terms in our general solution. And again, to emphasize this, the solution to this homogeneous differential equation would be y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of five x plus c sub two times e to the power of negative two x. Which means for the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation, we would have y of x equals c sub one e to the power of five x plus c sub two times e to the power of negative two x plus big Y sub p, where big Y sub p is a particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. So because we're looking for a particular solution to this differential equation, where the left side would be equal to two times e to the power of three x, a good guess for big Y sub p would be some constant times e raised to the power of three x. That's what we'll do next. We'll go ahead and make the guess that big Y sub P is equal to some constant A times E raised to the power of three X. So now what we'll do is find the first and second derivative and then perform substitution into the original differential equation. And then once we do this, we'll try to find the value of A. So big Y sub P prime would be A times the derivative of E raised to the power of three X which would be three a e to the power of three x, and therefore big Y sub p double prime would be equal to nine a times e raised to the power of three x. Now we'll take these three functions and perform substitution into the original differential equation. So for Y double prime, we would have nine a times e to the power of three x, minus for three times y prime, we'd have three times three a 
e to the power of three x, and then minus ten times y, or ten times a times e raised to the power of three x, and this must equal two times e raised to the power of three x. Now our goal here is to solve this for a. We'll notice here we have nine a times the exponential minus nine a times the exponential. So these two terms cancel out. So we have negative ten a e to the three x equals two e to the three x. We can divide out the exponential. So we have negative ten a equals two. Divide both sides by negative ten. We have a equals negative two-tenths or negative one-fifth. And therefore, our particular solution, big Y sub P, must be equal to negative one-fifth times E raised to the power of three X. So now that we've found big Y sub P, or a particular solution, we now have enough information to determine the general solution to the original non-homogeneous differential equation. Remember, we already found the first two terms of the general solution from the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, and now we just found big Y sub P. So the general solution to the original non-homogeneous differential equation will be Y of X equals C sub one E to the power of five X plus C sub two E to the power of negative two X, and then minus one fifth e to the power of three x. I hope you found this helpful. We'll take a look at another example in the next video.